this man. I was starstruck because I thought it was Idris Elba. I was like, dang, what he doing in the barbershop? <laughs> we have Mr. Keto Smith. How are you today, sir? I'm good, man. Thank you. Appreciate you for having me out. Man, I had to get you out, man. You be making moves out there, man. Like, how do you do it? Man, listen. I was born and raised in Michigan. We, we, we have uh, hustlings in our DNA. Okay. So I do everything I can do to make sure that I'm providing, you know, and getting things done. But not only for myself, but for my clients as well, because that's the biggest thing is making sure that they're taken care of. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Well, what I want to do first things first, I want to get to know you as an individual first before we even get into that. Mm -hmm. So tell me again, where are you from? I was born and raised in the city called Jackson, Michigan. So it's about uh, 45 minutes west of Detroit. West of Detroit. Uh, yeah. That's up north, huh? Yeah, up Ooh. North. yeah. You came a long ways, man. Long ways. I made it here. Though. Long journey, you know, 30 plus years up there in the snow and cold. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we made it. Um, I've been, uh, you know, you live life, right? Right. And, um, you know, I had a, my mom passed away when I was young. Mm -hmm. So when I was 14, my mom passed away. And I was a, a freshman going into my sophomore year of high school. Very detrimental, very dramatic, you know, change in your life, especially when, like, uh, I was the baby, so everybody else was out of the out of the house, and she was very uh, loving and caring and kind for me. So it just definitely changed my whole ideology of life and how I think and what I felt was important, you know what I'm saying, because we we care about different things when traumatic things happen in your life, so. Okay, okay. Any uh, brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got... Um, well, that's a question. <laughs> so with my mom, I have two brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest of those two. And then with my dad, I have like, a, I think my dad has a total of about 10 or 11 kids or something like that. But I'm the youngest of those two. So, you know, I, it's a big age gap, you know what I'm saying? And so I didn't particularly grow up directly with them. So mm -hmm. I can't say that, you know, I, some of them are, you know, definitely ingrained in my life and some of them are not. Okay, so I was doing some research on your page, my man. Okay. I'm about to show you a picture, and I want you to tell me about this. <laughs> so I have a picture here of this man on stage with Maya, the, the singer Maya. So tell me about that. So we was at what they call the Jackson County Fair, mm -hmm. and uh, I was a super crazy Maya fan, not for the music, if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, she was there performing on stage, and she was like, I need somebody to come up on stage with me. And Everybody that I was around knew I was a Maya fan, so they all pointed at me, and she definitely caught me on stage. Yeah, caught your boy. Yeah, okay. She, she knew what was good for her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she called me up on stage and um, kind of went from there. Oh, so that's one of them uh, things you'll never forget, huh? Yeah, no, it's definitely something I will never forget. Um, I was super uh, ecstatic. Uh -huh. Well, it was kind of like, you know, I felt like I was somebody. <laughs> that's all me. people chose me bro she couldn't tell me nothing you couldn't tell me nothing bro. so i seen her all grinding all up on oh, you come oh, on boy, i know you was in there you was yeah. like you thought you were gonna go home boy he's like my you know so here's my number did you slide in your number uh you know what i'm saying i, I did what i tried you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's you know, funny she talking about hit up my fan club i said i don't do fan clubs that's mm. <laughs> so I see you, you, you come a long way, right? Mm -hmm. You've come to the sharp suits, the man, you always fresh when I see you, right? I try to be. I'll show you another picture. Uh -oh. Now I'm gonna put these pictures up on Facebook so y'all can see <laughs> what I'm talking about. Oh, so see that right there? That's the swag though. That's lime green polo with the, with the watermelon and kiwi knife. The kiwi now y'all, I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna give y'all, try to give y'all a little visual. Mm -hmm. Now this man actually has on baggy clothes. He actually looks like he's sagging, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. So tell me about your time and your life back then okay so back then it was just kind of like you know we go into transitions in life you know and, and and at this point in time you know baggy clothes was in uh mm -hmm. you know what year was this oh man that picture had to be oh three oh four okay yeah so you know I, you know I, I was super big with air force ones uh -huh. still, at this point in time right now i still have those shoes in my closet really yeah I still got, you know, I poured a pair out the other day that was like uh, 10 years old. That was just in my closet. But so they, they made the, those, those, they made the transition uh, from Michigan. <laughs> uh -huh. But so at that point in time, you know, I was just kind of like uh, trying to figure things out in my life and where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being a father, being in the family and things like that, just taking care of business. But, you know, you still had to have your, you know, your little swag. And at that time, right. that's what was in. And, you know, I always had the uh, limited edition Air Force Ones. Yeah. You know, we go to a certain spot, 
not everybody could get them, you know. Those are watermelon kiwi patent leather jeans. Mm -hmm. It's very fresh. Okay. So at what point did you put the Air Force Ones away and start pulling out the crocodile? I mean, I actually, I got a pair of forces on right now. Yeah. Oh, I got that, I, okay. I got one on lights right now. Like, okay. No okay. Well, tell me about that transition, though. All right. To, from, oh. from, the, from the baggy clothes to the suit. Yeah, yeah. So transitioning, you know, uh, when I was a child, I did childish things. You know, um. And I did, you know. So, I, you know, I, I had good people around me. Um, even though, like I said, when my mom passed away, right, and and I I had a choice, and my dad uh, took me in. Let's just say that he okay. took me okay. in, and from my the summer of my uh, freshman year to probably midway through my sophomore year, I stayed at my dad's house, and you know it could have been a mess, and uh, my brother that I didn't know he was my brother, but I mean, he has kids the same age as me. Mm. Right? Oh, so he's older. Okay. Yeah, so uh, my nephews are my same age. You know, I got a nephew my same age. I actually got a nephew that's older than me, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, and so he just taught me how to be, you know, a man. He taught me how to, you know, live on, you know, both sides of the tracks and how to get, a, get along with people and how to uh, have a full conversation, look people in the eye and things of that nature. And so, as I transitioned through life, mm -hmm. right, he always was like, boy, what you wearing? What you doing? <laughs> and stuff like that. So it got to the point where we got time where I was able to, like, uh, you know, change up my dress style. And I mm -hmm. always had a different style and things like that, able to switch into a suit and stuff like that. But my suits got a little bit more slim, a little bit yeah. better. You know, I started getting to the gym. I wasn't as, bad, as, as skinny, you know. Uh -huh. So and it just changed over time, evolved. So tell me, why is real estate even interesting to you? Uh, well, the thing about real estate is this, is that the number one reason, so you have to find your why, right? Mm -hmm. So I have two whys on why I do this. Number one, I have a daughter, she's in college, you know, we got to pay for that college, right? Yes. Number two, um, when I was younger, my mom always wanted, she always told us, we're going to get you a home, we're going to get you a home, we're going to get you a home, mm -hmm. we're going to get us a home. And she never was able to do that. So she passed away without ever being able to make that a, a, a reality for us. So mm -hmm. now... When you circle back at it, right? People, everybody wants to get into real estate because they feel like they're gonna get money and do mm -hmm. this and do that. Yeah, okay. But what are you really trying to do with your life, and what are you really trying to do? So I'm able to help people. One of the biggest things that I really love is when uh, a family walks into the house and the kids go running and find their bedroom. That's my room. That's my room. Mm -hmm. That you know that really tugs at your heartstrings, right? And I feel like once we close on that home, we find on that home and close on that home. That is me fulfilling her dream over and over and over. Oh, and over. I got, now that gets to feel like proud moments. You know yeah, what I mean? Yes, for sure. So for when sure. did you get your license? Uh, I'm five years in now. So I've been, you know, doing this and for five years. Um, I've just been able to be blessed to be good at what I do. Yeah. Right. And, but the thing about me is I don't come from a place of uh, wanting and handout. I come from a place of compassion. And my clients can sense that they can see that people people can read people, right? Mm -hmm. And they know I'm not there just hey, you know, grab and get this and get that. And I'm not taking people to the most the most community. I don't call the new home and say who hey who got the highest? What's your commission? Mm -hmm. Is there any bonuses? I don't do that. Whatever fits their profile, their budget, that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna take care of. So you're not a salesman. I'm not a salesman. Oh, that's important, right no. there. Uh, I'm a That's matchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> a matchmaker, yes, yeah, yeah. A matchmaker. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so what's the first steps into buying a home? So your first step into buying a home, honestly, is to get pre-approved, right? Okay. You don't want to be out looking at homes and you don't even know what your buying power. Right, right, you know, right. And that's the mistake people make. They just want to run out and find a home or they want to get on Zillow and Trulia and mm -hmm. all of that stuff mm -hmm. and shop. But what are you shopping for, right? Mm -hmm. So secondly, oh, well, you might have that question in hand. So get, you know, find yeah. out what your buying power is, getting pre-approved. Okay. And, and how long does that take? Honestly, pre-approval time can take like between, you know, two days to 10 days. It depends on you. Mm -hmm. If they say, hey, Ace, we need, we need this documentation, this documentation. You got to get the documentation to the lender. You got to get it done right away. If you don't, then, you know, it's going to take time. So what type of credit score would I need to even consider buying a home? Okay, so as, as we're dealing with this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. and as we're doing the coronavirus, things have changed over time. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, before, I mean, I could get a 580, you know, in a home. 
mm -hmm. right? Right now, the banks have changed their guidelines and their limits. So, you know, 640, um, 640 or uh, above, mm -hmm. right? Uh, man, crazy. Chase Bank, man, I seen some they went for 700 credit score and 20% down. Ooh. Yeah. So, but I also have affiliated business partners that I work with, right? Like the number one business partner that I work with when people have credit issues is going to be Damon Green with mm -hmm. credit, credit done right. Damon with credit done right. Y'all hear that, right? That's Damon. Right. Damon Green. You giving away your jewels, man. Like, Listen, man, they got to, you know what, man? It's not that, it's not, it's, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. right. I'm, right. A, I'm, a, I'm going to work. I'm going to get up every day and get to work every single day no matter what mm -hmm. I can tell somebody, you know, how to go and get the water, but they got to keep going to get the water. Yes, you know exactly. They got to keep going to get it. I'm going to get up and go get it. Right. So mm -hmm. if you got to get credit repair, then my dude going to help them with their credit repair. Um, but if they work with me as I have in this, I have goodies here. So I have okay. my platform here. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is helps guide people through the process of getting into a home and how we do credit repair and things like that. So if you do credit repair with us, we'll, it's going to be no cost to you. Really? Yeah. So it's like part of the package. Part of the package. Man, look at that. We have DJ Turner says, what advice would you give someone who wants to be a realtor? Okay, so if you want to be a realtor, first and foremost, you have to, to identify what school you want to go to. So okay. there's different options. There's Champion School of Realty that's here on San Pedro. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Sabor, San Antonio Board of Realtors has a school off of I-10. Mm -hmm. And then there's also online schools, all kinds of online schools out there. Too. What's your favorite? Um, Would you rather do online or go into the place? Me personally, I did my online while I was at work at a job that I didn't like. Yeah. In my cubicle. Yes. I was looking at the cubicle, you know, doing it online. But then I went to Champion and did their test prep courses. Champion got owe me a plug, man. So, um, <laughs> how long does it take for you to get this license? It just depends on how hungry you are. For oh. me, I, I did my classes within a month and, mm -hmm. you know, did my study and got my, got my uh, testing up. Does it cost? The test? To, to even get a license? Or, you know? Yeah. Um, online, you can get it for about 500. I mean, you can find these little uh, rinky dink uh, places, if you will, on mm -hmm. um, Groupon. For like a hundred, two hundred bucks. Groupon, yeah. okay. Yeah, but in, in in class, to go to class, um, can you get closer to the mic? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. Yeah, get get, get up in there. So, uh, Champion School of Realty or Sabor, San mm -hmm. Antonio Board of Realtors, or you can do it online. Um, now, also, you can get a Groupon. You can do it online for like two hundred. Online, usually about 500. Mm -hmm. Champion, I think you can get a package for like a thousand, mm -hmm. but you're in class getting taught by a teacher. Mm -hmm. Online is self paced on your own. Mm -hmm. You got to do the reading, you got to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? So it just all depends on how and, you and feel you like you're learning. Okay, right. So Everybody, right now, I mean, like 90% of the country is online learning. Right yes, now, so. <laughs> really, for real, for real. Yeah. What is the seller's market? A seller's market is when there is not a lot of inventory. Okay. out there so say there's not a lot of homes so say you want to go look for i want a three bedroom two bathroom home mm -hmm. um with this and that so we go on to look for it and there's not many of them out there so it's whatever is out there in the field of what you want yeah so if you have two months two months or less worth of in of of inventory in a one one given market center mm -hmm. then um it's a seller's market okay what is a buyer's market when you have over three or more months worth of inventory it'd be a buyer's market Explain. What do you mean by so? Meaning, so many homes on the market, and if no, if no more homes were sold, it take certain X amount of months to sell them. You know what I'm mm. saying? One way or another. So when it's a seller's market, you know, uh, it shows that the economy is on a, um, it's more of on a, uh, a surplus. You know, and when it's a buyer's market, it's kind of when it's the the economy is kind of on a decline. Because people are trying to sell, 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 sell. Okay. So once I get my credit together, mm -hmm. what happens then? Well, once you get your credit together, then we go out and then we find a home, right? So mm -hmm. we want to make sure. That, but no, stop. Time out. That's how people do that. I personally would sit you down and do a buyer consult. Okay. Now we're going to check and see what your wants, your needs, and your must-haves are, mm. right? Those are all different. What you must have is what's going to be detrimental to your family mm -hmm. um your needs is going to be de detrimental to your family your wants is you know the frivolous things that you want in your home 
Okay. You know? So if I had, um, let's just say a, a high 580, 600 credit score, mm -hmm. what type of house am I looking? I'm not looking to get my dream home, am I? No, it's not really about your credit, right? Okay. On that aspect. At, on that aspect, it's about your, you know, your, your debt to income ratio. Mm. So all of that plays into part of you getting a home. So it's your credit, your, it's your work history, your credit, and your debt to income ratio, meaning how much debt versus you have uh, uh, income wise monthly. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is, um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, stratified market? Do you know what that is? Uh, okay, we'll, we'll skip over that. I don't, <laughs> know, I don't know if I said that. I don't know. Right. researching that, bro. <laughs> How much do I have to pay an agent to buy a house? You don't have to pay an agent a dime to buy a house. And if they ask you guys to buy a house or pay them, then um, come holler at me. So that's, that's a scam or something? That's, yeah, that's a scam. You don't have to pay nobody to buy a house at all. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What's some things I need? DJ says, what are some things I need to find the best realtor? Uh, what you need to do to find the best realtor is you got, first and foremost, you want somebody that's going to gel and mix well with you, right? Uh -huh. You want somebody that's going to be, that's going to meet your personality and that's going to be an understanding of you. You don't want somebody to just want them to do what they want you to do. You want somebody to do what you want, you need them to do. Your realtor works for you. Mm. You don't work for the, you don't work for the realtor. The realtor works for you. They don't work for the new home builder. They don't work for the seller. They don't work for the lender. Now, when you say that the realtor works for you, mm -hmm. do you have some some customers that work you like a dog? Yeah, of course. So tell me a story about a time that I mean, they, man, they seem like they were never satisfied. The the biggest part is that you just got to keep, you know, sometimes you have to go go see more homes than you want to see, mm -hmm. right? And and I always err on the side of caution to the clients and be like, look, make sure when you be going to this home. Because it, it, it seems like it always matriculates back to the one they first saw, mm. right? You know how they say your first answer is usually your best answer. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it is. So um, a lot of times it's just basically like uh, going and seeing so many different homes and getting in that car, out of the car, out of the car, especially in this Texas heat. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably the biggest thing. Um, I, but I'm, I'm equipped for it, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be successful if I wasn't equipped for it. You know, I'm built for this. I'm here for the long run. I'm here to help people. So even if you're disgruntled and you're angry and you're mad, at the end, you'll be happy. I promise that. Mm, I guarantee it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, what determines your down payment on the house? Okay, so on the FHA loan, uh, Federal Housing Authority loan, is a government-backed loan. So um, is that, um, where do I get an FHA? Where did that come from? So that's going to come with, with the lender. So, okay. you know, I have affiliated business, part of the lender, lenders that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, that I work with very well. And I am, again, I'm a matchmaker of homes. Mm -hmm. I'm a matchmaker with my lenders. You know, I try to put my lenders together with the, with the, my clients and lenders together who has a personality that's going to jail. So you actually get to know these lenders? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And, it, and the thing about it is it's, it's just like there's so many realtors out there, there's so many lenders out there. Not everybody is going to be the best fit for somebody. You know, what works for you may not work for me. Okay, so you get the credit. Mm -hmm. Once you get the credit, you mm -hmm. find out how much you, you, you're getting from the bank and so mm -hmm. forth. You find your realtor, mm -hmm. right? No, and, no, 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 no. Nope. So you find your realtor off top. Off top. Okay. And he's going to guide you through the steps. Mm -hmm. He, she, okay. whomever may have you is going to guide you through the steps. And if they're not, then, then there's a problem as well. Okay. You know, there's, there's a lot of realtors that drop the ball in, in between the process. And that's why, you know, certain things happen. And certain people don't get what they need or what they want, or they're just not happy. So should I sell my house first before I buy another one? Um, it just depends on the strategy. So I actually, good question. I actually met some people today um, and they bought a house six months ago and they were military mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. came in. Uh, they didn't, you know, just buy the home just to buy it. I mean, they did, they, you know, they, they walked the home, they liked it, but they didn't know the area, right? Well, how so, does that happen, first of all? How does that even happen? I mean, because a lot of military folks, they come in and, mm. and then they're here, you know, and they got to get a home. They got a certain amount of time they got to get a home. I thought it was like their realtor wasn't good and, wasn't good and didn't find, find for them what they really wanted. Yeah, it just depends. It just depends. Sometimes they say, they see it, they say, we good, let's go. You know, a lot of times the questions that I ask is going to bring that up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask, 
what schools you want your kids to go to, what kind of school you want your kids to go to. Oh, so even knowing schools is important. Yeah, you gotta know your you gotta know your 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 market area. You have to. There's no way you can be successful for your client if you not if you don't know the area that you live in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how many homes should I look at before I make that final decision? Honestly, so I tell my clients, you can look at many homes you want online, right? Mm -hmm. You can put all these things up, compile this big list, right? Mm -hmm. And after you compile the list together that you want to see, say say you have 10, Mm -hmm. knock it down to your top five. Okay. Right? And then that top five, knock it down to the three that meet every specification. Mm. We'll go see those homes. If out of those three homes we see is not it, we'll circle back again and kind of go through the same process. So if you get someone who looks at the first home and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this, do you stop them? Be like, look, you know, let's look at some more. No, because the way this market is right now, for you, first of all, when you walk in, you know. Mm-hmm. That's just like you see in that first love. When you know, you know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that home is a, your first love. And I don't take this lightly because this is going to be the biggest purchase that you ever make in mm-hmm. your life mm-hmm. until you buy your next home with it. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How long should you stay in the home? Most people stay in about five years. Five years. Plus. Five years? Five years or so, and they're ready to move on and get something different. But their equity have grown. San Antonio, mm-hmm. you're getting about a 7 to 8, 8% increase in, per year on your home. So why is it that, say, your, your house is worth a certain amount, but when it's getting time to sell, it's not selling for that amount that it, it said it was worth? Uh, it just depends on the, uh, the, the comparative, the market analysis, right? So okay. what the market states. So in that area... What is home selling for around your area? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so if one thing I will do is if I'm selling this house here and you own this house here and I see you out or I might just go walk and say, hey, look, I'm keto. I'm next, you know, I'm selling the house next door. Here's my card. This is going to, you know, this, obviously the sale of this house is going to directly affect your home. Mm-hmm. So just shoot me an email. And when the home sells, shoot me an email. I tell you what we sold it for. You Then you'll know. Mm-hmm. What is earnest money? Earnest money is the money that you put down. It's like a good faith payment, down payment, right? Okay. So earnest money is that money you put down. It's usually like 1% of the contract price. Some of the new home builders, you can get 500. Some of them you get 1,000. Some of them, you know, the higher builders or whatever, you might get 25. So this is on top of the whatever nope. percent you got to put down? No, nope. so the earnest money goes towards your down payment. Oh. Yeah, so you take the earnest money. So if you put 1% down, you know, that goes towards your down payment at the end. Mm. Mm-hmm. So how much, how much would you suggest a person pay um, as a down payment, you know, to have a good well mortgage. To be honest with you, right now, interest rates are super low. As of right now, yeah. So what they would say, money is cheap. Mm-hmm. Interest rates are low. Money is cheap. Put down the the minimum down payment. So your money's like worth more. Now. Yeah, go exactly. Go park your money in somewhere that's going to yield you a higher return on your investment. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I when I get my home, should I order a uh, home inspection? You always should get a home inspection on a pre existing or a new home too. Right. Okay. So you get a home inspection. So in the process, so you get you a realtor, you get yourself pre-approved mm-hmm. or and then you go through and you um, we go out, we find a home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you go through the process of finding a home, then you'll be going through, you will put down your earnest money, mm-hmm. you will put down your option money and mm-hmm. option money is uh, it gives you 10 day option. So it's ten dollars a day for 10 days. Mm-hmm to uh, take the home off the market and do your inspections and stuff. And that's when you do your inspections and you request your repairs. At what point do I ask for inspections? Is after I decide I want this house? As soon as you, yep. So I will get the option money check from you and, mm-hmm. the, and the earnest money check from you. Mm-hmm. Those go to the title company. Mm-hmm. That $100 goes to the buyer. Mm-hmm. I mean the seller, I'm sorry. $100 goes to the seller for, it's basically like, you know, we're taking your home off the market for 10 days. It's $10 a day to take your home off the market. Okay. But it's imperative because we're getting this inspection done. When we go through the inspection, then you're going to read through your inspection together, collectively, mm-hmm. and figure out, okay, this is something serious that we want to get fixed. This is not something serious. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Deidre says, have you ever heard the phrase, own what you can rent and rent where you want to live? If so, w- what are your thoughts on it? Uh. Yes, I have. And I have two thoughts on it. One is, um, if you come to me talking about renting a home, I'm going to ask why, and I'm going to try to talk to you about how and what is important for you to buy. Also, why shouldn't we rent? Uh, because why, why give your money to another entity mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. building equity in yourself? But most people now, like millennials, right? Mm-hmm. We got millennials growing up and buying homes and things like that. 
and they have family and they're going to rent a home. Don't go rent a home, especially if you have a family and kids and things like that. Invest in them, invest in your future, invest in them because come down the line, you're going to have that home. Okay, so now you've got that five-year interval. Mm -hmm. Five-year interval, come down the line, you're going to be able to have equity to go into a new home. I'm going to ask you this, mm -hmm. just kind of, um, if I'm on Section 8, why, should, why would I even want to go and I mean, that's a, a home. that's a mindset of your own, mm -hmm. right? You got to, you got to, if you want better, you're going to do better. You're going to do better. Right? So I'm I'm not going to be satisfied with being on Section 8 and, or here they call it housing here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, paying $14 a month for rent. You know, I'm not knocking it. I'm, you know, you got to do what you have to do, especially in the situations that we're in and, mm -hmm. and people, you know, losing their jobs and things like that. But, you know, everybody should want to, you know, go out, work, and, and buying a home is supposed to be, quote, unquote, the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what, you know, everybody will want. And so I'm just trying to do what I can do to help provide that American dream for the people. How, how important are final walkthroughs? So final walkthroughs are super important because we have, uh, um, you have your inspection. Mm -hmm. So now we have requested repairs. So now the repairs have been done, supposedly. So this, does this get tacked on top of your... Mm -mm. So that... So your, your upfront cost is going to be your earnest money, your option money, right? You're going to have to get an appraisal and you're going to have to get an inspection. Those are all your upfront costs, mm -hmm. right? And then nothing else comes back out to you until you have to do your down payment. Mm -hmm. Repairs and stuff like that is going to be for the seller to pay for. Oh. Yeah. The okay. seller pays for all your repairs. Um, they, need to, they need to sell you they, a good they house. They need to sell you their house. Or hmm. you negotiate more money for closing costs and things of that nature. So how do I know if I'm getting a good deal? Well, your realtor is going to run a CMA, which is called a, in our market, it's called a comparative market analysis. Mm -hmm. And what they're going to do is run the CMA to see, make sure that you get fair market value for your home. So the suggested market retail value. So there's two different things, right? Mm -hmm. There's the tax assessor's uh, value, mm -hmm. and then there's the fair market value. You know, so the tax assessor's tax value, value, they always market. have a value, and it's not always the same. Really? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Deidre says, can you explain what equity is for those who do not know? Mm -hmm. So say you bought a house in 2000 and you sold your house in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me scratch that. Here's a good analogy. Here's a good situation. My clients bought their home post uh, previous to 2007 market, 2007, 2008, you know, economy collapse, right? Mm -hmm. So they actually bought the home in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 years later, they sold the home and netted after paying the realtor and everything, after growth, the growth, growth, growth of, of equity in their home, which is the growth of the amount that the home is worth. So pretty much, if you bought your house for this month, mm -hmm. much whatever it's worth now, yeah, you know, so that's what your equity that is. That goes back to saying in San Antonio, you'll get about a seven to eight percent increase in your home per year, mm -hmm. depending on the the situation. So this year, I mean, you would think that the market is down and things like that, but not really. Not at all. We've been working. We've been hustling. We've been grinding. So they sold their home. And when they sold their home, they netted $95,000 in, mm. in 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is an escrow account? Okay. So the escrow account is basically, we put it in escrow. Um, it's, it's definitely paying off different things that's going to be in the house. So like your tax escrow, right? So when they, when they, uh, you get your mortgage, so your, your, your principal interest, mm -hmm. Insurance and taxes are all um, so taking part, out your mortgage, okay. right? So they take the money out of your uh, your mortgage every month and put it in escrow. The okay. escrow account, then when it's time for your taxes to be paid, they release the money out of your escrow to pay your taxes. Why do we pay taxes on our houses, though? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, so say like in Michigan, there's no, uh, there's state tax. Mm -hmm. You know, there's local tax. So we pay city tax and state tax. In Texas... There's only federal tax. So that's a good thing. That, well, they, you know, they're gonna make it up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> right? What are some of the ways they make it up? Property taxes. Mm -hmm. Your property. So is taxes. it you don't own the land that your house is you on? You own the land, but you gotta get taxation without property taxes. So if I buy a house, I actually own the land that the house is on. So I can I can knock my house down and do whatever I want on that land. No, you can't. You know, no? Okay, because there's a HOA. Uh, let's talk about the okay. Let's talk about HOA. Why do we have HOA? Because they don't want people just going through and messing up the neighborhood and doing things. I mean, you don't want to have your, you know, home and then a certain next thing you know, the person paint their home orange next to mm -hmm. the whole home 
or you don't want to come home and there's 95 cars in the driveway every mm-hmm. day or in the front of the house and things like that. You don't want somebody building a big old obstruction in your backyard. Now you don't have your view. <laughs> you know? okay. So those things are regulated by the HOA. Mm-hmm. So usually uh, your, your, your property is straight up in the air. Yeah, right. Down to the ground. Correct. Right. And on your land, you still got to pay taxes on it. But um, you don't, um, one thing you do not have is uh, the right. So like if you get oil or something like that, right, mm-hmm. you strike oil, you don't have mineral rights no more right around here. So you can, you can own the land, everything in there. But if some oil come out that, wa- that land, you don't have the mineral rights. There's no rights to the minerals that come out that ground. Hmm. What are some mistakes you see people make often when buying and selling their homes? The mistake is that they rush into it with someone that may, may not be as uh, educated as they need to be, one. Also, um, I've seen it happen time and time again with new, new homes. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, I don't need a realtor. Um, and they'll run out and you know get into a new home or get under contract and then all of a sudden they need um they need to uh you know need help mm-hmm. right I always tell people you don't want to go to court without legal representation, so why would you go buy a home when there's legal documents involved without mm-hmm. a certified licensed professional um would you recommend a person their first mind their first home? Would you recommend they buy themselves a brand new built from scratch home or a home that's already built? It, it just depends on them and what they want for their family. Okay. Sometimes well, what's the benefits of getting a brand new one compared to one that's already built? So the benefits of buying a brand new home is that, um, yes, William, HOA is homeowner association. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the benefits of buying a brand new home mm-hmm. is that you're going to have a warranty, right? So they come with a one, two, 10. So mm-hmm. one year door to door, two years of uh, plumbing and electrical and 10 years structural for a new foundation. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. And then secondly, you know, you get a brand new toilet. Nobody sat on. No, <laughs> right. And but, things of that nature. You so. know, when you have a brand new home though, it's, you always have a lot of critters at first. Yeah. Bec- but, but, but you got to understand they move in dirt, right? Mm-hmm next door across the street things like that they move in dirt you know they're knocking down trees and moving dirt and things like that so until the the the, the community is settled you're going to get that but that's that's why you get pest control they have pest control mm-hmm. uh placards on the side of the house mm-hmm. and they can just go in and tap into it and spray it through, you know spray it through the place hmm. mm-hmm. what type of pest should i look like pests like termites what type of pest should i look for when i'm buying a home termites that's the termites main for sure ones? yeah yeah like a va alone you can't even get a loan without getting a termite inspection so that's one of the, another one of the inspections you should get. Yep. Okay. So there's three types of loans, or there's more than three, but the most prevalent ones is going to be uh, FHA, mm-hmm. uh, VA, veterans, mm-hmm. and then there's uh, conventional. So conventional is a different animal where you have to put 5% down. Okay. Uh, your credit profile got to be a lot better, though, than the FHA, but because it's not government-backed, right? Ooh, this is all coming out of your pocket, pretty much. Yeah, 5% down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's the most you've made? On, on selling the house enough to go to eat <laughs> <laughs> he said enough to go to eat yeah, yeah okay well what kind of money should i if i'm a realtor right what kind of money can i make so there's three percent so okay realtor gets so if if i took you so say this home is for sale mm-hmm. it has a realtor that put the home on the market okay. i take you to see this home you buy the home that realtor is going to get three percent i'm going to get three percent. what you gotta share it with them why? Yeah, three percent. But it's not. It's not you, the buyer, paying me, mm-hmm. the realtor, the the buyer's yeah. agent to go do it. You're paying. The, it's the seller that's paying me. Mm-hmm. So the selling uh, entity will pay the buyer's agent. The builder will pay the buyer's agent. Mm-hmm. There's never no money out of your pocket. That's why I said if you, if someone tells you, hey, uh, it's gonna cost you like four hundred dollars to work with me, run. So that's a scam. It's a scam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, give me your best closing story. Uh, I have a few of them, but I have, I had a, um, disabled vet Mm -hmm. that I was working with and, um, she kept saying that she wanted to get to a home. She was basically disabled because she was a cancer survivor. Okay. And you know, she couldn't get done, couldn't get done, couldn't get done. And, and then I I met her through somebody else Mm -hmm. and it referred her to me. And then I caught in and caught in some chips on some people that I knew. Mm -hmm. And then we worked together as a cohesive unit, as a team, and got her into a home. And it was a lot of tears, a lot of uh, jubilee, excitement. But, um, you know, 
and that right there is why I do this. You know, there's families that I mean cry at closing because they I never thought I would be able to own a home mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that. And and that is like my heart being poured out. You know, and I can say like you know I look up like yes. You know, making dreams come true. Uh, this is like another uh, another dream. You know, another time being able to fulfill my mom's dream. So give me your worst story, worst closing story. Uh, it's not a closing. It's, okay. it, it happens to us realtors all the time, yeah. and and it, and, it, and it's very hard to swallow because we put a lot of time and effort into. Well, I do. Mm-hmm. I don't know about us, but I know a lot of people that I work with as colleagues. And see, and one thing right there, I don't think of other realtors as competition. To me, the I'm competition, the competition is the man that I see in the mirror every day. That's my, I'm my only competition. The other realtors, they're colleagues. Is it because you're pretty much your own boss? It's not. So even, as much as you, if you want to make money, you got to get out there to yeah, get that money. You got to get up and go get it. Period. Mm-hmm. What, what, uh, what is it? A goodie mod? Yeah. You get up, get, get out, out get, get some. some. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't all, and then again, don't, don't spend all your time trying to get mine. Mm-hmm. So don't look at me and what I'm doing. Don't look at me and what I'm doing um, because I'm not your, your, yeah, you live in your life. Yeah. I'm not your competition. I am your colleague. Hmm. We are in the same field. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't see other realtors as competition. I see them as colleagues. We work together as a big group. Question. Do realtors find other realtors to buy their home or are they there? Like, Um, mm -hmm. so some brokerages don't allow them to sell their own homes. Right, okay. so you have to enlist another realtor to sell it. So you have to get another realtor to get mm-hmm. yourself a home. Mm-hmm. So are realtors the hardest people? Like, okay, for instance, they say doctors are the hardest patients, or mm-hmm. nurses are the hardest patients. Mm-hmm. Are realtors the hardest people to deal? No, no per because, se. I mean, ninety percent of the time they know what they're looking for. Uh, so, so it might be easiest. Yeah, it might be the easiest. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. So but going back to the uh, worst thing is like when you work your butt off to help mm-hmm. somebody out, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, they're like, "Oh, we already under contract." Mm. You know. Now, I, how I combat that, I should get a buyer's rep agreement signed, mm-hmm. buyer's representation. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, you know, we just get to moving around. And I, I'm a more, I work on my handshake. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to stick a piece of paper in front of your face like, I represent you now. Mm-hmm. You know, my hand, your word is your bond where I come from. Yeah. You, you know, I, all I have is my word. So they turn around and they end up with another realtor because they promised them this or that, or, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody said they were going to do this or that for them. So, Mm -hmm. so you're dealing with people, right? Mm -hmm. All different types of people. Mm -hmm. I know you don't have some people want to make you want to choke them. Yeah. But I mean, I'm very patient. I have a lot of, I have a lot of patience from, uh, I played, uh, basketball and ran track in college. So high school and in college. So, um, you know, your coach yelling at you, going off on your, mm-hmm. your teammates and things like that. You just learn to grow patience and be understanding. Mm-hmm. And also, again, like, I just feel like I have a higher being really guiding me through my steps. My steps are ordered. Do you have a mentor? Uh, yeah, we have. I, I mean, we have mentors. We have coaches. Mm-hmm. So Kobe has a co- had a coach. Mm-hmm. LeBron has a coach. LeBron has a coach on the bench. What, two, three assistant coaches on the bench. Some more in the back. Strength coach, mm. health coach is a team. A team. So why would I not have a coach? So do you have a team? Does does being a realtor take a team? So with me, I have what they call the KS Realty Group, but mm-hmm. I am a part of Keller Williams Heritage. Keller Williams Heritage is uh, the number one Keller Williams in the world. Mm. So that's a good person to work with, work for. Yeah, the good brokers to work for. So Craig Owen is the uh, creator of Keller Williams Heritage. So we was a t- number two market center of Keller Williams in the world. I mean, and yeah. So the first one was in Austin with Gary Keller. Mm-hmm. Second one was here with Craig Owen with Keller Williams Heritage. Keller Williams Heritage beats every Keller Williams in the world. I mean, that's LA, that's Vegas, that's Dubai, that's everywhere. With, Whoa. With volume, and, yes. And San Antonio, right? It's crazy. Right, right. So Craig, you know, you know, so I was a free agent out here trying to figure out where I was going to land, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, one of my colleagues, Tammy, um, messaged Craig and said, hey, uh, Craig, uh, Keto Smith is um, looking for a home. You might want to reach out to him. So I get a call, and I remember this vividly because I was going to watch one of my Michigan games with my Michigan group. Mm-hmm. And he calls me, and he's like, hey, Keto, this is Craig Owen. I'm calling you from Greece. Right. Okay. He called me from Greece and told me why I should be a part. And then I was like, I'm good. Done deal. And it's been great ever since. So. So I have the KS Realty Group, which is com- is compiled of myself, mm-hmm. uh, which is the team lead and realtor. Uh, Esmeralda Williams mm-hmm. is uh, up and 
upcoming star in the real estate industry, a uh, young lady. Where you find her from? Uh, Jim. The Gym? Jim, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they were talking to her about coming to be a personal trainer because she's a personal trainer as well. Okay. So if anybody wants training, got you. Um, and they asked her, they was asking her questions, and I'm trying to work out next to them. And I was like, well, what's your degree in? And she said, you know, international business. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I chimed in, like, so you ever worked in real estate? Yeah. yeah. So she's been great. Um, she's been hustling and doing her thing. Um, and we've been working well together. And so uh, she was at first my uh, director of operations admin type. Mm -hmm. um, but she since um, got her real estate license now, and she's doing an amazing job um, selling homes as well. So now we have since looked to, we, we hired a new uh, admin person now. And so now we're looking to actually add another realtor as well. So I see you uh, some mornings, you know what I mean? Well, at least when back when you were in the office, mm -hmm. uh, you go around. I would thought you was the boss at first, to be honest <laughs> with you, because the way you went around and checking on everybody and motivating everybody yeah. in the office, yeah. you go on the other side of the building. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why do you do that? Well, that was, that was one time when Corona just started. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember that vividly too. Mm -hmm. and, and they were, uh, you, know, you know, just kind of morale. You know, I was a captain on the team, man, and uh, and I, I genuinely like what I do, mm -hmm. and I genuinely like the other realtors around me, and 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 them hustling and them working it hard, it just motivates me more. Is it competition inside the building? Uh, I wouldn't say it's competition, okay. but I'm sure everybody looks at everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's people I look up to right now, and I'm like, man, I gotta get, I gotta do more. Yeah, <laughs> like, and, and you go look, do more, and they look, and some other realtors look at me like, uh, man, keto killing it, and I'm yeah. looking at them like. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at them, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, two-part question. Mm -hmm. So, where all has being a realtor taken you, as you know, in selling houses? Also, um, you know, the money that comes from where where has you been, you've been able to go because you know you make money off of realtor. Yeah. So, never in my life would I thought that I would be here sitting here with you. So, if you look at um, how do you call it? Statistics, right? Mm -hmm. Statistics state that I'm supposed to be dead mm -hmm. in jail or on drugs. Mm -hmm. Well, not jail, prison. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a difference, right? right? People don't be like, you in jail, no, you in prison. You in prison. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a difference, right? Um, so statistics. I never was one to let statistics dictate who I'm going to be. Mm. Mm, say it again. So Boy, never <laughs> let statistics dictate who you're going to be, right? Because what, our steps are ordered. Mm -hmm. right we are ordained to be who we were supposed to be mm -hmm. right but that don't mean that because you were raised in a single parent home that don't mean that you because you were raised in the hood that don't mean because you didn't have a meal to eat every night that you got to go out and be a thug mm -hmm. or you got to be grimy or you got to treat somebody bad or you got to take something from somebody else that means you got to work harder to get to where you want to be mm -hmm. real estate wasn't my first option and my first thought I just I, uh, you thought you were gonna be a basketball player. Yeah, and then after, <laughs> I did, and then after that, I mean, then I did basketball and track, so I did one of them. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to school to be a teacher. And I, what was you doing before you was a realtor? I was working right before I was a realtor. I was working at uh, Everest. Everest. I, I what was, is that? I was in Ever, Everest Institute. You know, get up off the couch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so okay. I was an enrollment person, and before that, I was working at Career Point College. And I started the high school completion program. Mm -hmm. So I was with them while they started that program. But people would come to me and complete their high school diploma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, so why I'll go around to them? Because I want to see everybody happy, man. I want to see, I don't want to be around no down mood people yeah. all the time. I mean, there's days where I'm down. There's days where I'm sad. But I, I don't let what happened yesterday affect my today. So, um, again, so where has selling houses taken you? So selling houses now have taken me to a different height. So like, you know, as I said, you don't have to be the same person that you grew up to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to lose some friends on the way. Mm -hmm. Right. You're going to lose some friends with success and you're going to lose some friends with uh, failure. Mm -hmm. Right. So on your upward descent, you're going to lose some people on your so downward climb. Do you own? Um, well, so when I say that, I mean, mm -hmm. maybe you have to fly to Michigan to sell the house. Maybe you have to, you know what I mean? No, no, no. So, so in Michigan, actually, I'm working. Crazy to say that I'm working on my Michigan license right now. Oh, you got to have a license in that state. Yeah, or state yeah. Or so you got to have a state. You got a license in each state to practice. Oh, Texas, Texas don't have reciprocity between state. Got gotcha. Texas is still uh, there's no state. such thing as realtor without borders. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I'm working on my license right now because I got a couple of my boys got licenses and things like that. And then my brother that raised me is retired now. Mm -hmm. So we're putting together something that we're going to be working on and. Um, it's going to be pretty big over there. 
So, All right. So what are some things because you're a realtor that you're yeah. able to do now? So I seen the picture of you and I don't know if you was in the Bahamas, Jamaica. You was like, yeah. where were you at? Well, I, I always went on trips, mm -hmm. but now I'm able to take a better trip. Right. I'm okay. able to live a little better life. I'm able to live in a little better neighborhood and things like that. Um, but I don't attribute that to money. I attribute that to hard work. Yes, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Because people look at realtors like, oh, they got money. Um, you know, we got bills. Right. Like everybody got, else. Like everybody else. And, you know, it's a it's a it's a roller coaster so, of a of a a, a, a job, right? Do y'all think the fake the funk real good? Is that what it is? I mean, some people do, some people don't. Hmm. But you know, you're supposed to do what you gotta do until you get to that point, right? So tell me about um your best trip that you you've taken. Um, best trip would have to say, I mean, I've, I've been to, so I kind of give you a quick, I mean, my daughter was born in St. Croix, which is Virgin Islands, oh, United States Virgin Islands. Okay. Um, my ex, uh, well, we, I've been to Puerto Rico a lot. Um, um, Aruba, that's probably my best. Aruba. Aruba. Well, yeah. why? What, what was it about Aruba? Super you... white sand beaches. Mm. The water was super clear. It was just beautiful. I thought you were like, super white girl. I was like, what? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Okay, Aruba. Man, I have to check that out, man. I really like Aruba. You want to go back, huh? Yeah. Would you live like there? No. <laughs> he said, no, this is a good place I don't, to I don't vacation. Wanna, I don't want to say I would want to live on an island. I would get a home and have it as a vacation spot mm -hmm. and then rent it out as an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. You know, here we go. Again, right? There we go. But but as far as like living there, no, I'm good. Because all you can go to one side of the island to the other. And I've been on a lot of them and I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that you've, you've found the house you want, mm -hmm. everything's good. How does closing breakdown that seems like that seems like that's when the, the paperwork is involved and yeah so the so when you find a house uh when you find a house they're already going through the process of underwriting processing and underwriting um since again post uh 2007 2008 when the market crashed they put a lot of regulations why did know, that happen with the housing market like when it crashed, crashed that first time um it probably wasn't the first time but bad time. loans they're selling bad loans i mean i know people that was getting a home for Let's say this home was worth a hundred thousand. They're mm -hmm. getting two hundred thousand dollar loans on it and taking all the equity out of it and running. And their home going into foreclosure. So they was giving them more money than they needed. Yes, that was giving them more money than what the home was worth. It was everybody. It was the oh. appraiser playing ball. It was the lender playing ball. It was everybody, you know. And everybody was just trying to make some money. Yeah, everybody trying to make some money, and it just collapsed the economy with all these bad loans and stuff like that. That's why this, this, you know. uh pandemic is a lot different um, because it's not stemming from housing collapse and stuff like that. It's more or less stemming from a viral. Why, why should we as black people uh, get a home? Like, why should we, you know what I mean? How can this help us as a people? Okay, so this is something I'm very passionate about, right? Talk to me. And, 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 and I'm going I'm to be real. I had a, this is a story. So I was at a barbershop. I love stories. I was at a barbershop and I told the barber, I said, hey, man, listen, I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, real estate. I can be your go-to guy. You know, we can have this, put my card, post or whatever. He's like, yeah, I got you, bro. You get your haircut here our time. It's good. Mm -hmm. So he had a guy, a brother, I was in a chair getting his haircut. And he was like, yeah, I'm trying to buy a house and blah, blah, blah. So my dude gave him a card. At this time, I had a picture on his card. Mm -hmm. He looked at the car and said, this brother right here is a real estate. He said, yes, I don't do business like that with black people because they always be messing stuff up. <laughs> he didn't know it was you in the barbershop at the time? No. Oh, he just, I, told, yeah, just told you guys, just told you the story. Told me, yeah, okay, story. Okay, go ahead, so, go ahead. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously he don't want somebody that has his best interest at heart. Right. Right. So why we as black people should own homes as uh, african-americans or minorities or whatever you want to call us may have you yes. right and this is not only just black but black and brown people mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and lower class people i mean general. we say this because we're black yeah 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 obviously so, <laughs> you know i had to be right? uh, the words of ace boogie and ace boogie alone is <laughs> so so um the reason why is because we have to have something that we can call our own. Mm -hmm. If I pass away, I'm passing that down to my daughter. Mm, that's one of the huge benefits yes. right there because that's yes. a weight off of our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Having a place, knowing a guaranteed place to live, that's just 
one huge burden off the shoulders. Let me a- ask you this, and, and you might not know the answer to this, but okay. how does 90% of millionaires and wealth start? Um, mama and daddy left them something. Okay, and then they go and buy real estate. Yeah. I mean, look at Donald Trump. Yes, He was a real estate example. investor first. He had real estate buildings. That's mm-hmm. where he took the money that his dad gave him and went and bought real estate. Hmm. So he invested his money very well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger started off with a one duplex. Mm-hmm. You know who's investing in real estate right now? All over Atlanta? Who? Jeezy. Which is a smart boy. Jeezy got, he has commercial properties. Like, like I seen this thing where the, the mayor had to come to him to talk to him about a project that he wanted to do in Atlanta. Why? Because he, he owned all Jeezy that block? owned all of that. <laughs> so realtors don't, so realtors sell uh, commercial buildings as well? Yeah, so there's commercial realtors and there's residential realtors. So that's a different license? No, it's just different, different uh, training. You got to get more training and okay. things like that, yeah. So there's a lot of different entities within there and you just got to get training. Land and uh, farm and ranch, mm-hmm. um, commercial, luxury. There's all of those things. Man. So talk, talk to me. Tell me, tell me, tell me some, some, some more things that we need to know as, as the people when it comes to buying these houses. So what you should know is be mindful when you're going in, right? A lot mm-hmm. of times, like I said, people nowadays, there's so much going on on the internet, right? Mm-hmm. You know, believe what? 10% of what you read nowadays. Yeah, for sure. Because it's fake news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah. it is though. It you is, really, it you is. can find anything. Yeah. Yeah. On Google. Yeah, on Google, right? But only read, don't only believe about 10%. You know, ask a professional, seek professional help. Mm-hmm. And, and I say that with the utmost sincerity. Seek professional help because you have to, you have to do this the right way. It's the biggest purchase you're going to make. Mm-hmm essentially ever until you end up buying another house, right? Mm -hmm. Seek professional help, take your time, make the right decision. Now, now when you're going out looking for homes, the way San Antonio set up, what you seen yesterday, somebody seen today. Hmm. Or what you seen today, somebody seen yesterday. Right. Sorry. And so I literally just uh, two weeks ago, I took a client out. Um, We seen the home. He's like, oh yeah, I like this house. Uh, We're going to think about it. Okay. Don't think too long. Hmm. It was on the market one day. Finally, later on that night, he said, hey, yeah, I think I want to put an offer in. We put an offer in. I was like, uh, we have multiple offers. And that's 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 typical. Mm-hmm. You you might have 10 You're offers. Not the only person yeah, you may that. have 10 offers on one home. Mm-hmm. And then you got to do your best and final. So that's bidding at that point? Yeah, well, no. You put They, they just said put your best and final in. It's the best and final offer. A lot of times now, um, like there's, a, I know a home that just went for 10, they sold it for $10,000 over asking price. Ooh, does that does that mean that person got screwed? No, I mean the buyer really wanted it, and the seller made more money. So the seller was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, yeah, yeah," because I mean that's just the way the market. The How market. often does that happen? Well, right now in San Antonio, I'll be say about eighty percent of the time it's going to be multiple offers. Mm-hmm. The market is just it's it's good. Interest rates are low. I just if you go through my Facebook, mm-hmm. I just walked through a home yesterday. Mm-hmm. Two story home, three bedroom, two bathroom home mm-hmm. that you can buy, and your monthly payment will be as the same or less than you would on a two or three bedroom apartment. That's not like a, a, a income based property, right? So mm-hmm. if you're paying fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars a month, you can own a three bedroom, two bathroom, two story home. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Deidre says, "What's the one thing a person should know before getting into real estate?" Don't come from a place of greed. Come from a place of compassion. You got to care about the people that you're working for. Not working with, working for. You're mm-hmm. working for your buyers, your clients. You're working for them. They got to be family. So I'm super, super protective of my clients because I feel like they're part of my family. So I got to make sure that they get the things that they need to make it happen for them. So... I want to get off. Well, first of all, before we before I get off off key with with the realty, tell them how to con- contact you. So you can reach me on uh, Facebook, Keto mm-hmm. Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, you can reach me on our Facebook, the KS Realty Group. Mm-hmm. Instagram, Keto Smith or the KS Realty Group. We mm-hmm. have two separate pages for both. Okay. And you can reach me on my cell five one seven area code three nine five seven four seven eight. Email me Keto Smith 
ngr at gmail.com. And keto is K-I-T-O, not the diet trying to steal my name, K-E-T-O. Mm. And I'm trying to get some rights to that, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, or our website, the ksrealtygroup.com. So you seem to be really into fitness and eating right. Mm -hmm. Can you cook? Yes, sir. I seen you yeah. make your own little Chipotle bowl yeah, and, yeah. and all that. Why why do you do that? Well, my mom was uh my mom was from Mississippi. Ooh. And so she was definitely a cooker and she and she told me, this is her words, you're not gonna need a female for anything. You all you're gonna need a female is for one thing. Mm -hmm. This is what she told me when I was young. And I used to, what one thing? I ain't need no woman. I don't need it. I learned when I got older, but you know, so she taught me how to cook, clean, iron, laundry, all of that stuff. I, I have all those tricks in my bag, right? But the reason why I got into the health thing is just that I wanted to make sure that I'm around long enough for my daughter to, to I want to see everything that she's got to offer life. Right? You, you seem to be, uh, you and your mom seem to be close. Like that That was your yeah. ex kum boom Yeah, type. she was definitely everything to me, so you know, when she passed, it was, it was detrimental. But the crazy thing is, is I was the one, you know, who had to make all the arrangements and stuff because I was the one that's living in the house. And my older brothers come crazy like, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm the calm and cool, collective, no cry, take care of everything. Because, you know, she instilled it all into me, what she wanted and what was supposed to be done. If so. it was um one thing that you wanted to tell moms, like say she was here, mm -hmm. what would that one thing be? It would just be, I hope I'm making you proud. And and all the people that knew my mom and, you know, I'll post something on Facebook, like Mother's Day just passed. It mm -hmm. was pretty, it was emotional for me this year. Um, I don't know. It just, you know, different things come and go. You can't, you know, put a finger on your emotions and why you feel that way. Um, and I posted a, a picture of me, little nappy head me. And, <laughs> and, and, and my hair was nappy. Bro. <laughs> and, 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 and it was, you know, my mom when I was young. And because that was, that's truly the only picture I have of her and me together, just one. And I just, I received it from uh, my cousin up in Michigan. And um, so I cherish that picture and I share it and things like that. And a lot of people was like, oh my gosh, she'd be so proud of you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what though? And it's like, I'm not fishing for comments or likes or any of that stuff. I'm just expressing my views and what I think, you know what I'm saying? So that that's just how I feel about that. <laughs> Okay. Last question. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend the realtor life for everybody? No, per se? not at all. That's not for everybody. Why? First and foremost, I had to learn the hard way. I had to fall on my head because budgeting is big. Budgeting is big. Right, because you, you, you only get paid by what you sell. How exactly. do you keep afloat? It's, well, you just got to be smart. It's about your hustle, you, too. You know, well. you can't have every belt. I bet your house is amazing. Nah. Like, oh, that. he say that. He, he say that. I mean, I like, I like life nice things and things mm -hmm. like that but i also i know i can't buy everything that i like okay best i know i said the last <laughs> question uh what was the best life lesson your mother gave you um just to make sure that's a good question um she told me so many <laughs> um just to make sure that i'm gonna be my own man you know and and be honest and and contrite with everybody you know don't try to hide things or roll punches and and that's still you know you're still learning those things and you're still rolling with them because you have to keep adapting in life and i i think as i get older i learn more so these grades are like keto's learning he's getting wiser so yeah i appreciate them a little bit more than i used to <laughs> all right well one more time with mm -hmm. social media is and how to mm -hmm. get in contact with you so facebook keto smith k-i-t-o smith or or the ks realty group mm -hmm. instagram keto smith or the ks realty group and www.thekesrealtygroup.com and that's about it all right y'all y'all check out uh check us out on a uh, radioactive podcast on youtube radioactive underscore podcast on instagram as well and of course radioactive podcast on facebook hey guys reach out to me if you need something i got a couple masks face oh masks he got the mask y'all yeah I'm, about, I'm gonna hook you up one too so oh I yeah got one in my pocket so i got face masks and i got some t-shirts so i can give away too so reach out to me if you need something i got you all right y'all yo this is radioactive y'all peace Yeah.